Okay. Assalamualaikum kepada semua Salam sejahtera dan selamat ya Selam, Selamat uh, salam Malaysia Madani um, Saya uh, Bukit Mendera ya, Syedina Abdul Rashid Dan juga di sini adalah uh, yang berhormat uh, Ipoh Timur Yang berhormat uh, Howard Lee Dan ini adalah satu sidang apa Dan saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada semua yang dapat dapat hadir ya. Uh, so kenyataan media ni adalah Um, untuk menghuraikan sikitlah mengenai kerisauan saya mengenai the lack of funding given to the arts and music in Malaysia. So saya telah sediakan uh, media statement satu dalam bahasa English dan juga satu lagi dalam bahasa Malaysia. Uh, saya akan baca petikan dari English dan saya akan edarkan uh, dalam bahasa Malaysia. Jadi as we all know Malaysia is actually very rich and diverse in terms of cultural heritage that spans centuries. Now we all know that Malaysia is currently we have a lot of very talented Uh, musicians and also very talented um, artists but one of the things that most of these artists and musicians express is that there's always been a lack of political will or rather to help improve certain standings especially for the industry now first and foremost we all know that during COVID-19 COVID related restrictions for the past three years have have created a huge dent in this industry and we all know that when it comes to creative industries as well as uh, tourism in general these are the most badly affected industries ever so with that being said the current budget that was allocated although you know the budget is is a, a very inclusive budget it's it's a very well thought out budget but we do understand the needs that it has to be more done to nurture and also improve the certain um, kata pembangunan ya pembangunan dalam dunia seni dan kreatif. Jadi one of the things that I would love to also throw is the idea proposal of number one is to create a better guideline such as dasar ya dasar dasar rangka ya eh? rangka industri kreatif and also look into ways to identify and also promote the country as a music hub a music destination music destination film hub and more so to introduce yeah music tourism because let me put it this way music tourism is such a wonderful thing that i feel that we could benefit from number one we get artists to come here to record or have uh, shows and at the same time these people these artists and their fans will come and what that will 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 stay in hotels makan di warung-warung kita dan sebagainya so it in other words it it can help regenerate reinvigorate you know the economy and um yeah with that being said i will have yam hormat howard say a few things as well makasih yam hormat um Walaupun apa yang disebutkan tadi oleh yang saya akan ulangkan bahawasanya uh, budget Madani 2023 ini adalah sesuatu yang sangat inklusif uh, yang menerangkumi uh, pelbagai aspek pembangunan masyarakat Malaysia, masyarakat ke arah Malaysia yang Madani tetapi terdapat ruang uh, dan saya akan guna istilah uh, adalah sesuatu peluang yang tercicir, orang perak tercicur lah uh, Apabila kita nampak ada segolongan rakyat Malaysia, penggiat seni, pekerja seni pentas yang mungkin tidak begitu selesa dengan keadaan yang mereka ada sekarang. Apabila kita dengar cerita penggiat seni pentas atau aktor-aktor pelakon-pelakon seni pentas pada saat ini ada yang pada ketika pandemik, ya, kerja tak ada. Tapi sekarang ni pula kerana kita nak hidupkan kembali ekosistem tersebut, uh, ramai yang terkandas dalam keadaan di mana kerja tak cukup tetapi tidak ingin masuk ke uh, sektor lain. Mereka terkandas dan tersepit di antara nak kekal membina dan membangunkan ekosistem itu, teruskan usaha ataupun nak diversify ke sektor yang lain. Ini ada satu kesan langsung, kesan negatif langsung di mana ke arah masyarakat madani di mana kita nak menonjolkan uh, budaya yang ada kita uh, ada kepada kita 
dan sejarah yang ada di Malaysia melalui kesenian pentas. Tetapi sekiranya keadaan sekarang terus menerus, kita akan hilang bakat-bakat ini yang sudah lama berusaha kerana mereka terpaksa uh, alih perjalanan kerjaya mereka ke sektor yang lain. Itu satu. Keduanya, uh, saya rasa uh, walaupun uh, apa yang saya sebut tadi adalah satu peluang yang tercicir, tetapi kita juga perlu maklum bahawasanya kita ada satu ruang fiskal yang agak ketat. Uh, maka uh, mungkin ahli-ahli parlimen seperti saya dengan yang Muhammad Bukit Bendera akan mengambil masa yang akan datang, 6 sehingga 8 bulan yang akan datang ini di mana budget, konsep budget dan kerangka untuk tahun 2024 uh, sedang dibina sekarang. Uh, jadi kita akan guna sedaya upaya kita untuk pastikan uh, ekonomi madani yang hendak dibina oleh kerajaan perpaduan ini merangkumi uh, kepentingan dan juga uh, aspirasi dan cita-cita penggiat seni bukan saja seni pentas, bukan saja seni muzik tetapi seni secara keseluruhannya so, itu je habis, selesai soalan alright, jadi terima kasih Actually kalau ada satu statistik yang nak, nak petik lah uh, 1.4 bilion lebih kurang telah diajukan uh, ke arah pembangunan pelancongan dan ada juga budget tertentu yang telah uh, di, di apa ni, diperuntukkan untuk menggalakkan perjalanan udara tetapi tak nampak ada uh, satu budget yang konkret bagi membantu penggiat seni dan juga pekerja-pekerja kesenian dan uh, dalam keadaan di mana kita nampaklah uh, yang terkandas, yang tersepit, yang sangkut dengan tak ada kerja atau kerjanya kurang atau upahnya lebih, uh, I mean, kurang daripada dahulunya, saya rasa perlu peruntukkan sesuatu untuk membantu golongan ini. Demi negara dan demi, kes, uh, demi seni. Dan juga saya nak tambah sikit, ya. jadi apa yang kita nak, nak utamakan adalah satu apa seni ya seni dan juga muzik ni adalah satu kerjaya yang sepatutnya diberi keutamaan dia sepatutnya kalau boleh ia bukannya satu kerja sambilan it should not be a second or third job it should be a career to which we can actually you know nurture uh, dan juga pada masa sama tadi seperti mana yang uh, Ipoh Timur telah menyatakan bajet tu sebenarnya dah ada diperuntukkan dalam pelancongan tetapi persoalannya adalah itu pelancongan Kemanakah ya? Kemanakah perginya hak untuk untuk membangunkan dunia seni dan juga muzik? Jadi itulah satu soalan. Tapi saya setuju di mana sekarang ni kita akan uh, draft ya rangka kerja untuk ke masa depan. Jadi cara yang lebih baik saya rasa adalah untuk kita approach ya ataupun siapa-siapa penggiat seni, muzik dan sebagainya kalau ada idea ke apa silalah. Ya, yeah, you can you can message us and also we want to hear feedback from you know these organizations and also the people the stakeholders for us to actually be able to formulate more robust plans for the future Masalah, most uh, masalah uh, dari segi how, how you know their experiences throughout the whole COVID experiences ya. Yeah? Um, sebagai contoh lah bila kita tengok ya masa lockdowns COVID dan sebagainya ramai ya rakan-rakan <coughs> ataupun penggiat-penggiat music dan sebagainya mereka telah uh, menjual alat music dan juga terpaksa you know they give up their 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 music. Um, the equipment and all of that instruments. instruments just so they can put food on the table jadi perkara ni saya rasa amat amat menyedihkan it does nothing to nurture you know the creative pulse of this nation dan bila kita tengok negara-negara lain ya Singapore Thailand dan juga Malaysia uh, sorry not Malaysia the Indonesia cara orang kata iktizam politik tu ada jadi persoalan yang balik kepada Malaysia saya rasa kita boleh ya buat bandingan dan juga cari jalan-jalan untuk membantu penggiat-penggiat muzik, seni, industri kreatif di negara. Why not? 
I mean, Malaysia has it all. Malaysia has it all. So we should be the one destination that everybody looks up in the region. Saya nak tambahlah. Um, saya nak membetik satu show, uh, tapi saya tak nak sebut nama sebab saya tak nak nayakan lah the organizer. Uh, dia merupakan satu production yang sangat-sangat besar. Sebel, mungkin sebulan sebelum total lockdown yang pertama. Dan uh, waktu itu ia melibatkan mungkin nak uh, masukkan satu rombongan penari yang sangat besar daripada satu negara yang lain. Uh, dan uh, show itu bukan saja setakat penari-penari yang datang. Hmm. Tetapi ia melibatkan backstage workers yeah. yang keseluruhan semua setiap orang tu orang Malaysia. Tiba-tiba benda tu bila dia terbatal, tercancel. Kerja yang dah ada orang melabur untuk uh, sewa equipment, beli equipment, tiba-tiba semua burn. So, golongan ini sekarang di dalam dasar kerajaan, sebenarnya tak ada sebarang inisiatif atau peruntukan untuk membantu golongan ini. Saya bukan kata uh, kerajaan perlu menjadi insurance company lah untuk penggiat seni. Tetapi, implikasinya bukan sekadar orang yang uh, dah melabur untuk equipment, tiba-tiba the entire industry dah tutup. Tetapi golongan ini punya kepakaran. Golongan ini mempunyai uh, kepakaran untuk membangunkan satu industri supaya ia menjadi lebih produktif untuk ekonomi negara. Tetapi peluangnya tercicir. Dan saya sentiasa petik bahawasanya uh, betap, uh, kemajuan atau tahap kemajuan atau kayu ukur kepada betapa majunya sesebuah masyarakat dan negara adalah berapa uh, setakat mana kemajuan uh, seni Pembangunan senia, seninya dalam masyarakat tersebut. How a country is measured in terms of its development and its uh, wealth can and should be measured by how wealthy the art circle is. Yes. And right now, it's quite poor. Uh, the odds between the highest ministry that received the budget is 33 billion, right? So, so this arts and culture is not... not I think it's not even 30 to 1, right? 30 to 2. So, so uh, does this reflect the new government's uh, uh, perspective on the significance of the arts and culture? I think... Um, yes, sorry, well, um, for me, I, I disagree. I, I don't think it's fair to say it's reflective of the, the new government, Kerajaan Perpaduan, and how this government views arts. I think, first and foremost, it's about repairing the economic realities that we face right now in this country. So there's so many other issues that we need to solve, for example, healthcare, education. But with that being said, I mean, this is where we stand up here to make our voices heard as well, to, say, to show people and also share with people that we still care. It's still there. It's just that right now we need to formulate plans. Again, it's not top down, but rather to have a more inclusive, something more sustainable, we want a bottoms-up approach and find ways to solve. We want to hear from the artists. We want to hear from the filmmakers, the actors and the actresses. How can we formulate better plans, better policies? Because selalunya dari dulu sampai sekarang banyak, yeah? you know, even in Penang. Everybody asks, what is going to happen with the, the Penang Arts Council? What is this? What is that again? So sekarang ni kita nak mencari sesuatu penyelesaian yang menyeluruh, something more holistic. And I, I think um, it would be disingenuous for me to say that um, this is the perfect budget because no budget is perfect. There will always be a first and there will always be a last. There will always be a best and there will be a, always be a worst in terms of input and output. Um, what I see here, it will be oversimplistic for us to say that, oh, this is just a negative uh, position that the, this government want to take in arts and culture. No, you can't say that because I think a budget is about being fiscally responsible, uh, considering the, the, the tight fiscal, fiscal space that we have for this year in this first budget of this new government, I think we must give ourselves as a nation and this government time. And of course, what uh, Bukit Bindara has said is essentially us voicing out that the expertise is out there. The sentiment is thus. We are here to help and contribute our ideas, um, our efforts to make it better. And there is room for it to be better. And we are here to try to make it better together. 
Any more questions? Uh, I have one question. Sure. So last year, following the government formation, uh, a lot of people in the art industry have informed that they were contacted by Motad to give their feedback. So I just wanted to know, is there no progress at all from the stakeholder meetings with Motad and what you guys are doing? Are you guys working together with Motad or is it an independent progress? We'll have to check with Motad. Well, we're speaking on... on we're speaking in, uh, in our capacity as members of parliament, backbenchers, who for all intents and purposes are not the government. <laughs> I think uh, definitely we may, or I've not, I'm, I'm yet to debate, so I may bring up your question to the House, uh, and uh, I look forward to hearing the response from the minister, as much as you are. But also one, one thing I'd like to add. One thing, um, there's a lot of, while, while we were doing all these fact findings and so forth, there seems to be a void. Uh, when, it, when it comes to finding information, statistics, numbers, when it comes to the arts and music, but just that duck. You must just ask to tell you. Yeah. Apart from yeah. what we came up with, we found something from Chindana. But again, this is based on, this was uh, published in 2020. So for mm. us to move forward, this is where we need information. Mm. So the information coming back to, which department, which, which commentary yeah. Is it MOTAC or KKD? And it's, it, it's um, things as granular as content stratification, how many ballets are held, uh, yes. how many ballet shows are held, uh, how many, I don't know, hip hop shows are held, where in which state. Are they fully private, fully government, partially private and government? Uh, are they all from foreign players? Are they local artists? How are they funded? These granular data is essentially what we need to help develop the entire scene. Now, I mean, this is a strictly ideological <coughs> question here. Now, we often think that, oh, the, the best way to let an industry uh, rise up or develop is to let the, the private players be totally free, unhinged from government intervention. But I think right now we're looking at the opposite situation. But, we need the government to inject not just capital, but political will into help revive and rejuvenate a, a previously thriving and developing scene because yeah. people have had to make choices. People have had to make choice of putting food on the table than to continue their love of arts. Now we must not allow people to have to make the choice of yeah. just simply putting food on the table. The government has the responsibility to make arts the mold, uh, the, the the way, the modus in which they will put food on the table. Professionalizing the arts is the only way that we can broaden the tax collection base, broaden our economy, broaden consumption, broaden supply of content and arts to continue, well, development of the scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any more questions? Sure. Creating creating policies. I mean, that's that's the best best way forward. Because with when you have policies, then you know it's easier for, for everyone to to follow. One of the one of the things that would be beneficial also moving forward to help spur and help this uh, industry would be number one, relooking into how licensing mm. is being given out. Because each pihak uh, berkuasa tempatan has different rules and regulations. Penang has something very different than say. Um, MBI, kat Perak, Ipoh dan sebagainya. And then also, kaji balik juga, yeah, entertainment fees and taxes. Because mm. if not mistaken, it's 25% profits, regardless of if it's a local, small, you know, indie show or something big, like um, Blackpink, for example. So these are the things that people need to sit down. And this is where we have to have you know, discussions between local government, state, and also federal agencies to sit down and also harmonize, harmonize, sync everything together. And then with that being said, also provide platforms and spaces. It's about one of the, salah satu rungutan lah, ya, ahli pemuzik, persembahan dan sebagainya, mereka tak ada tempat nak main. Selalu ni yang kata, tak ada. And then, kalau lah ada tempat main pun, saat ni ada rate dan sebagainya. So we want to make this industry less fearful. We, we, we want to take away that pressure. And also provide, when you have 
empty spaces, ayalah bagilah regulation, syarat-syarat hmm. dan sebagainya. But that is up for future discussions as well. So these are the orang kata the 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 ways, the proposed ways that we can move forward. There's still a lot that can be done. This is why I urge, yeah, for us to approach this from a bottoms up. That means we listen collectively from the people in the industries and just find find ways to move together. Cool. All right. Done. Thank oh, you. thank you.